Second point. The good that a possum does is rarely seen. Number one, because they're nocturnal, which means they come out at night. And secondly, because they're typically a shy creature. But I want you to think about the, the benefits of the possum for a moment. Just the ticks alone. Just eating ticks and dead bones. If you take everything out, else out of the equation, those are very important jobs. Now, Lexi might remember Edgar Hansen. Do you remember Edgar Hansen growing up at church? Here's something I didn't know about Edgar Hansen. We grew up going to church with Edgar, and Edgar drove about, eh, probably about 45 minutes to an hour to come to church every Sunday. He had been a member of a church that was closer to him called the, uh, the Fairview Church of Christ. Uh, and for whatever reason, I don't know the details, had decided that he needed to leave that congregation come to work. Well, Fairview is one of these old buildings with the gas stoves in the building and nobody ever gave it a thought who lit the stove. No one ever gave it a thought who mowed the grass. No one ever gave it a thought who kept the cemetery stones put up in place and all of that stuff. Until one day, Edgar Hansen, who hadn't gone there in almost 50 years, had a stroke. I remember mom's cousins up there at Fairview said, so we got to church Sunday and nobody, nobody had the heater on. The building was cold. It's below freezing. All because someone who had not been a, had not attended there in over 40 years had been doing something that nobody saw. Nobody took notice of. That's a possible. Nobody pays attention. He goes about his business doing the good that God created him to do, and nobody sees. Matthew chapter 6. I want you to think about this. Jesus has a lot to say about doing things to be seen. It's always good to be noticed. But if we're doing it just for the sheer fact of being noticed, we're doing it for the wrong reason. In Matthew chapter 6, down in verse, well, we'll begin in verse 1, I guess, of Matthew chapter 6. Jesus says, Beware of practicing your righteousness before others in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. I can tell you there's a lot of things that goes on in this little congregation of people. There are people like Dennis, who goes to the hospital and hands out cards with service times and invites people to come to church. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm laying in the hospital bed with a heart that's not pumping right, fluid building up, I'm not sure that's where my mind would be. But Dennis is almost out of business cards. Now, there's other people. Don does all the editing on all of our YouTube videos that go out. Nobody ever sees that on YouTube. They might hear my voice on YouTube, but they have no idea what goes on behind. My own editor-in-chief, Kate, does all the PowerPoint. I don't do the PowerPoint. I lay it out on paper, and she puts it on the computer screen. There's just so much that goes on. You know, you ever wonder who makes the communion bread? Or does it just simply appear? Typically, Celia makes the communion bread. It just, there are so many things that go on in any congregation that we take for granted. But yet it's stuff that has to be done. You know, when Cynthia was with us, how many times... Before she passed away, how many times did I come in and the building was cleaned? We never knew who cleaned it. It just magically cleaned itself. There are things that are done that sometimes we take for granted. And they're not done because they want praise or glory. Or 
even thanks sometimes. Matthew chapter 23 down in verse 28 of that chapter. Actually, let's begin with verse 27. Jesus says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you're like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly... See, this goes back to doing things to be seen. Which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteousness to others, but within you're full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Your King James Version will say iniquity. Jesus is cautioning us not to be people who just want to be saved. It's a trap easy for us to fall into. And again, back in James, this time in chapter 2. James is one of my favorite books because it's so simple and straightforward. Very short book, very condensed. But James is a simple person. Paul sometimes writes in... Uh, I'm not saying I don't like Paul's writings, but Paul sometimes, you know, dresses things up a little bit. And James just cuts right down to the bare bones important issues. In James chapter 2 and verse 17, James says, So faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. James says, there's a need. And if you don't fulfill that need, even if it's not a prominent place, your faith is dead. So bottom line, possums are not aggressive. Possums are rarely seen or really, really even appreciated for what they do, but they do it because that's what God created them to do.